All right, you guys, I'm, I'm here with uh, Chase Hammer, our, one of our top reps up here in the Anchorage office. Um, Chase just finished off a great week um, on the sales report, was $10,468 for this last week. So I thought it'd be a great idea to get Chase online here, and uh, it'd be awesome to see in person, but uh, this will be our best we can do here for now, and uh, ask him for some tips. So Chase, first of all, you started uh, last summer, right? Uh, yes, sir. That's right. I started last summer, about July 7th, and I uh, worked for about seven weeks uh, before going back to school last summer. Great. Now, um, how did you do in your fast start? My fast start, I sold 9,600, uh, just shy of the 10K. Um, and so my advice to those who are in their fast start right now, uh, don't take breaks because I took about two days off and I definitely could have shattered 10K if I didn't uh, take some time to myself. So just go hard or go home. Got it. Now, did you just do a couple demos or do you remember back your fast start? How many appointments do you think you did? Uh, I was definitely doing minimum three a day. Um, it was all about the volume of demos, just, you know, phone time, you know, at least once a day, uh, just picking up, you know, scheduling calls with friends and family. And then I was even getting to referrals uh, during my fast start, but just doing a high volume of demos, at least three a day. I think the most I had was six in a day during my fast start. And I still haven't done more than that in a day. So uh, yeah, I was going hard. And so then you finished last summer, if I remember right, about fifteen to seventeen thousand ish or so, right? Uh, at the end of last summer, I was at uh, twenty thousand and some change, like twenty thousand four hundred ish. Oh, okay, great. So over twenty grand. Then you went off to school. Um, really didn't work at uh, at school there, and then you just got back about a month ago, right? That's right. And um, now it's in Alaska, it's the push period. So it was time to work a little bit harder. So you went out this last week and sold over 10,000 just this week. So that's kind of a nice week. You were making 30, almost 35% of most of this week, right? Uh, yeah, I've been making 35% this week. And uh, I just got my 40% my promotion uh, about two days ago. Awesome. Congrats. So, well, give Thank us you. some tips. So how did, how did this $10,000 week happen? How did you do that? Um, so... I could, I'd love to get into like the, the in-depth, the tricks, like the, the really minute stuff that you had to pay attention to when you're doing your demos. But what I really want to start off by talking about is, um, and this is just for all the reps, whether you're, you're you know, shooting for 50K like I am by the end of the summer, or whether you're just starting out and you're still in your fast start. Um, if you want to sell a lot of Cutco, all you have to do is show up to the house. And what I mean is you just have to do a high volume of demos make lots of phone time. The phone is the job. Just constantly make calls during your phone time. I was shooting for every team meeting. We have two team meetings a week, one on Sunday, one on Thursday. And each of those nights, I'm making at least 60 to 70 phone calls to schedule up the rest of the week. Um, because my average for phone calls is about one schedule for every 10 calls. Uh, and so I'm just trying to fill up my days, um, Sundays, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and then sometimes on Saturdays, uh, depending on what, how many appointments I have. Um, if you do a high volume of demos and you are just doing at least three a day and you're just showing up at houses and you're cutting the rope, you can be the, the least skilled representative out there doing the worst demo and you're still going to sell a thousand dollars a week, $2,000 a week. If you're just seeing a lot of people. Got it. So it sounds like you got all your, you all have all your, your numbers together. So all your referrals, any initial list appointment names you have, and then you're just jamming on the phone and you got your schedule booked off. So it sounded like you have some specific days you work and a couple days you don't. So you kind of have your schedule all organized there. Yep. Uh, concerning time management, that's the one thing, uh, for those that don't know, I'm a midshipman, uh, United States Marine Corps midshipman officer candidate. Um, the one thing that is incredibly important when, especially in this type of business is time management. And so I sit down and look at my schedule for, for each month and I just block off the days that I know I'm doing stuff. Sunday, I know I got church from this time to this time. Saturday mornings, I know I have a, a small group with men's breakfast. I know I have youth group Wednesday nights. Um, you know, I, I got other stuff going on throughout the week that I just block off very first thing. Um, schedule away family time. I do all that before I go to schedule demos. And then what's with, le with what's left, I schedule about two hours apart, little money signs on my schedule. And those are the times I'm going to schedule my demos. Um, I know if I have to drive to different towns, I'm marking off certain days. Okay, this day I'm going to be in Anchorage, Alaska's big city, or Wasilla, Sarah Palin's down. Uh, you know, whichever days I'm going to be in what towns, uh, it all starts with managing yourself and knowing where you're going to be. Got it. So a lot of demos. So on those 10,000, I saw it, um, you had about 15 orders there um, for last week. Uh, how many demos do you think you did? Um, my ratio right now, I'm probably for every for every five demos I do, I'm closing on about four of them. And my average order is about $400. Um, 
Uh, and so occasionally, you know, you're going to get the bagel. Uh, you're going to, you know, get a no sale. It's going to happen. Uh, you just have to understand yourself and know, okay, how many demos do I have to do in order to make sure that I'm making this much? Um, you know, do that math for yourself. How many, you know, what is my average order? Uh, what is my average closing ratio? And that way you can calculate, hey, I want to make $3,000 this week. I want a $3,000 paycheck. All right. So for me, that means I have to sell about $9,000 worth of Cutco. And that means that I have to uh, do X amount of demos. I'm doing, trying to do the math in my head right now, but that means I need to do more demos if I'm trying to get 400 per appointment. Mm -hmm. So hopefully that makes sense to everybody. You got to plug in those numbers and, and set your goals. Break it down. So you take your goal, break it down to how many demos and your managers can help you do that when you're new. Now, um, I, yeah, talking to your manager, you had a day that didn't go as planned. You know, um, he said you did your pretty good. Uh, what, what happened there? So, uh, I had, I had a, I had a day scheduled. I had scheduled four appointments for that day, uh, from about nine in the morning to about seven thirty at night. Uh, my first two, I bageled. I got, I had no sales on both of those. Um, the third one, I sold a spatula spreader, which it's, it's something don't focus on, on the, don't focus on, on the, the dollar amount. But you know, for me, it was kind of like, oh man, you know, you know, still, you know, barely getting by or whatever. And, uh, so I'm sitting in front of the house on my very last appointment, you know, after kind of a bum day, uh, in the middle of push period. And I called my manager and I'm like, Hey Roger, like I'm, you know, I'm just kind of bummed out. I don't want to be here. Uh, I'm lacking motivation. Can you go ahead and, and, and hype me up? Give me some motivation. What do you got? And then the phone was silent for a second. And then without really missing the beat, he goes, Chase, quit being a little busy. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, all right. <laughs> Said, screw it. And so I just left all the baggage that, I, you know, that you have on your, on your shoulders, left it in the truck, went in there, did the best demo of my life. No, probably not really. Uh, you know, just did, a, did an awesome demo and uh, ended up selling a homemaker. Um, and so my, the piece that I want to leave you guys with concerning that is a matter of, you know, customers, whether it's customers from the previous demo or maybe even a previous week, um, they're going to leave, they call it bad seeds. They're going to leave you bad seeds in your head that are going to try and, and plant and they're going to try and grow and take over, you know, oh, uh, you know, should I ask, you know, should I ask for the order? Should I ask about the payment plan? Should I just drop to the galley? Forget about the homemaker. Um, you know, they're going to plant those bad seeds in your head and you have to recognize those and you have to say, no, that's a bad seed. No, no, no. You know, however it is that you need to, to tell yourself to get away from those. Um, you just have to leave all that baggage that other customers are bringing you. Just leave it right in your truck or your car or whatever before you go into your next demo. Yeah, that's a really powerful story. And a lot of times as a rep, you see, wow, I sold 10 grand. Everything must have gone perfectly for him that week. No. <laughs> and, you know, no. They don't really realize that a lot of times people have the biggest weeks. They have more challenges during that week than the rep who, you know, sold a thousand did. Um, it's just, they, they did more demos and got through them more. So that, that's really great to hear. Um, let's finish with just maybe a couple specific things on your demos. You say some of the nitty gritty, can you maybe pick up like two or three things that, uh, you think you do on your demos that are, are helping you sell either more sets or more accessories or, or what are some of the things you're doing to sell some of these larger orders? Sure. So, um, the biggest, the biggest thing, um, if I had to, if you had to pick out in the demo, what do you do that's going to make the, or that's going to in, inspire the customer to buy more? Um, you have to build the set concept, and that starts with the names and uses. Um, if you're going to study anything after after watching this video or, or listening to this on audio, if you're going to study anything, study those names and uses. Uh, know every single use for each of the tools in your blue book. Uh, cause your customer, it might look at some of those and if they look at the homemaker and they just can't find a use in their kitchen for the butcher knife, they're not going to buy the homemaker. And that's just how it goes. That's how people think. Um, and so while I'm going through the homemaker, for example, or the signature set or heck, even the ultimate set, when, when if someone's uh, interested and they say they cook a lot, a lot, then I have to give them a name. I'm well, not just the name, but I have to give them the use, why they need this knife and why it's going to look great in their kitchen and how they're going to get a ton of use out of it and how it's going to save them time, money, and energy. Um, so that's how you build the set concept is, you know, I, I do my names and uses a little bit out of order. I go pairing knife, trimmer, and then after the trimmer, I do the petite carver. Hey, you know, trimmer, this is going to be for your small jobs in the kitchen. Petite carver, this is going to be for the medium-sized jobs. And of course, I go more in depth than that, but I'm just keeping it real brief. Carver, that comes next. This is for the large-sized jobs, right? So then that builds your, your trimmer, petite carver, and carver. Those are your small, medium, and large jobs in the kitchen. To complement the carver, you have your carving fork. And then to complement the carving fork, you have your turning fork. And so as you go through these names and uses on the homemaker signature, ultimate, whatever, you're saying, hey, each of these pieces complements each other. And this is why you need the set. And guess what? The set's actually discounted. It's, it's cheaper to buy the set than all these knives individually. 
because I'll have that happen a lot when someone I'll go through the homemaker, maybe ask for the order and they'll be like, huh, you know, can I just get individual pieces? You know, and I'm like, I, you know, I say, well, you know, sure. You know what, what pieces do you feel like you get good use out of? And they're generally going to pick about eight out of the 10 pieces. And it's like, man, you know, uh, Miss Jones, uh, you can actually get that for almost the exact same price and you still get those two extra pieces um, and you go ahead and get those table knives with it. Um, and so it's all a matter of making sure they have a use for each tool that you're explaining. Um, so if you're going to study anything, study those names and uses. Um, so that's, that's, I'd say that's the biggest one. Um, the next, or sorry, you want to go ahead and. No, that's great. Sure. That's just knowing, you know, you got to give customers a reason to buy. And I know sometimes, you know, you go through your first three, especially when you're new rep, if you don't have all the pieces, you get through the ones you have, and then you're like, oh, there's another one, there's another one, there's another one, you want to buy it. And if it's just mm -hmm. another one, you know, there's probably not a lot of reason to buy. So really being specific about each piece and how they work together and complement, that's great. Uh, Do you have one more that you wanted to share? Um, yeah, it's kind of, kind of uh, general. This is just for every single demo. Um, Sometimes, and I'm sure you all understand, once you know, you ask for the order on the homemaker, they say no, ask about this, you know, the sample program, you know, five months only 244, you know, and they, they say, ah, oh, you know, still that's too much, you know, that's too much. Um, and then you go to drop down to the galley, there's always a little bit of zest that's lost whenever you're going from that homemaker to the galley. And it's like, oh, okay, well, check out this set, you know, galley. And then, okay, you know, here's some starters. And then, this is on advanced training six and then ghetto, you know, <laughs> it's, it's like, ah, oh, you know, you're losing that energy. Um, but the reality is, is that we are, we are, we are the knifeologist. We need to be giving these people the tools that they're actually going to use. We need to be giving them, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm, I told customers, I'm not there to sell you the biggest set. Although if you want to get it, I'll absolutely sell it to you. You know, I'm a commission sales guy, uh, you know, but, um, the thing is with, um, with, with dropping down is that you have to get more energetic. You have to be more enthusiastic as you're dropping down because guess what? I love the space saver. I think that's some, I honestly, I think that's the most awesome set that we have because oh, you can hang it on the wall and you can put it in the drawer and it's a block. You can put that in your camper. Whenever you're going camping, you can bring that with you in your bag. If you're traveling, uh, I think it's an awesome set. And so I always get super hyped for each of the smaller sets that you drop down through because that shows the customers, Hey, it's okay if you can't get the big set right now, but check out these other sets that are still just as awesome because they come with some of the more essential tools. Uh, if you can't get all, all of it right now. Um, so don't lose that zest as you're dropping down. Um, our job is to get the customer exactly what they need and what they're going to use. Uh, and so as you get to the more customizable sets, um, that's going to start happening. And so don't lose that zest. Stay energetic. <laughs> you, you can tell you had those uh, some advanced training six nuggets there. So you, oh you, yeah, I love that. <laughs> you put in some energy learning and listening to some Vector Connect talks then to help you out. Is that accurate? Yes, uh, those uh, those that audio library is awesome. Um, what I uh, a person in my office, I can't remember who said it, but they recently came up with a goal and they said uh, they said they said starting this week, I'm going to listen to at least one. Um, audio, audio file on Vector Connect every single day. And it's like, wow, like, can you imagine like all the, all the, the wealth of knowledge that you're going to get from these people who have sold, you know, thousands, hundreds of thousands, you know, I'm sure, that, you know, guys with like millions of dollars in personal sales, uh, you know, what can I, you know, I can learn so much from just doing that, taking, you know, 10, 20, 30 minutes a day, just listening to these guys talk about what's made them successful, uh, which I guess is what you guys are doing right now by, by listening to, uh, to me and me and Mr. Casey. We, we, we appreciate you helping out with that, Chase. Well, thank you so much. Um, congrats on your week, and I'm sure there's more to come. I heard 50K is the goal for the summer. That's right, 18 to go. All right, nice job, man. Well, we will be looking forward to seeing you sometime soon, and uh, thanks again for all your help, Chase. All right, thanks a ton, Ryan. Have a good one. Enjoy your week, everybody.